Jim, uh, Colonel David Hackworth has said that he personally witnessed the death of a couple of hundred men in Vietnam because of inadequacies in the M16 rifle. Do you know something about that? What is so tragic about this, which was a central fact of life for American servicemen in Vietnam, was that it was an entirely preventable bureaucratic tragedy. What happened was that during the late 50s and early 60s, a rifle called the AR-15 was invented by an independent inventor named Eugene Stoner. And what typified this rifle, rifle was first its superb reliability that fired the thing for days and days and it never jammed. It was also typified by a gruesome lethality. There had never been a more deadly weapon designed for the job infantrymen are supposed to do of, of killing their enemies. Unfortunately, this weapon had several defects from the Army's point of view. One was that it was from outside its system. It was not from its own Ordnance Corps. The other was that it used a much smaller bullet than had been standard for, for most of the Army's uh, the Army's equipment. And so when the Army agreed to start taking on this weapon, which was small and light and portable, to, uh, uh, to give to the Vietnamese themselves because they were short and supposed to need a light weapon, they made some changes in it in the name of militarizing the AR-15 to become the M-16. And two of these changes uh, ended up being fatal for probably thousands of American servicemen in, in Vietnam. One of them was to change the powder that the rifle had been designed to use. This was an automatic weapon that fires at very high rates of speed. And the precise explosive characteristics of the powder it had been designed to use were necessary to make it run smoothly. The Army, for reasons never adequately explain, explained, changed that powder to a different kind that they'd always used for years and years, with the result that this superbly reliable rifle became deadly for the people using it. It would jam in their arms, and that's what I think Colonel Hackworth is talking about, that you'd find people killed with a jammed rifle in their arms. The other change, more subtle, was to increase the, the rifling uh, rate in the, the, the twist rate in the, in the uh, barrel of the, the grooves gun. inside the barrel. Yes, to yeah. make, in, in effect, to make the bullet, the round spin more quickly as it came out of the, of the, uh, of the barrel. This made it more stable for long distance shooting. If you were trying to shoot somebody a thousand yards away, this was a plus, but it made it less deadly for the kinds of close range encounters that were 99.9% .9 of all combat in Vietnam. So those two preventable things cost many Americans their lives. Has there been any uh, serious governmental investigation of this? There was, in late 1967, a study by a, a congressional subcommittee chaired by Congressman Icord of Missouri. And they hauled out all the evidence, and they had people say, yes, uh, yes this is what has happened. By the time the changes were made, it was essentially too late. It was the last year or two of the war. And I think that the significance of this is what it illustrates about the banality of evil in the way uh, military procurement can operate. Nobody intended to design a rifle that would betray Americans who used it, but the result of following bureaucratic instincts, of wanting to do things the way they'd always been done, had the, uh, the product of this uh, deadly weapon for the Americans who used it. I must plead ignorance on this. Where are we with the M16 today? The M16 we use today is a patched up version of that one. The, there has never been a change back to the original powder, the powder with which it works so smoothly. The rifling in the barrel has not been changed. So there have been certain modifications to keep it from jamming quite so often, but it's essentially the, the weapon used during Vietnam. I don't remember this being uh, reported by the press. There were, there were sporadic bits of coverage, well, not surprisingly, they, that were, as a matter of fact, mainly by TV correspondents. That's, uh, I think NBC News had the main story on this. It was, by and large, not in the, in the print media for reasons I am not sure of, except that the Army at that time was mounting a full court press to deny there was anything wrong with a rifle. And, and the Army spokesman say, oh, it's just a cleaning program. We have this riffraff in the field that doesn't know how to keep its rifles clean. If only they'd handle it correctly, the thing would work fine, et cetera. And so the way it finally came to light was when hundreds and hundreds of parents started writing letters to congressmen saying, we hear from my boy that this rifle doesn't work. We hear from his friends that they're getting killed and they, they can't fire their rifle. And that's how it finally came to light. I remember stories coming out of Vietnam which uh, told of the individual uh, soldier over there riding home for a special lightweight lubricant which he was using against uh, regulations in order to keep his rifle functioning. That, that was precisely the story of this rifle because to make it run, uh, many soldiers found that the official lubricant that was issued just didn't do the job mm -hmm. and it jammed. So they started writing to their, their parents for a special brand name that spread like wildfire among the troops. And those letters were also forwarded to congressmen. And that's what got the investigation underway. So the, the press 
did not report it because it was too soon to do it because the investigation was underway? Is, was that your answer? Not having been there at the time, I am not sure of what details of daily life kept most reporters from seeing this. You would think it would be a fundamental fact of existence if the, if the basic infantry weapon didn't work very well. It seemed to be the biggest story of the war. It would seem that way, but for, again, for reasons I don't really know, only sporadic accounts appeared and mainly on TV. And interestingly, when the i committee issued this voluminous report, 600 pages, saying that there has been negligence verging on the criminal in the procurement process, it was a one-day story in most of the papers and went away. And one wonders why. One does wonder. Mm -hmm.